Hello there, welcome back. Um, what I've done is I've glued the LEDs into the traffic light plastic uh, unit and I've, I've painted it to try and mimic my era, which is sort of mid 60s sort of type thing. Uh, what I've done is I've, I've lined up all the LEDs so that all the short legs are on the same side, which you may be able to just about make out from that. Um, so what, what I'm going to do is join all those short legs together because that will be the negative return. The other sides will all have to have a separate cable because they will need to run um, separately into the, the Arduino. Okay, that looks okay to me. Um, as in, and as if by magic, here's one I prepared earlier. So, so what I've done is I have soldered all the negatives together and I've put a, a cable on each of the other LEDs. Um, and just to make sure that this, um, I've cocked anything up. Let's just do a little quick check on here. I've, I've just got a little transformer running of about two, two and a half volts going through it. So I'm just going to wire this up just to make sure it is all still working. That's red, red, yep. Green, green is good and amber. Yep, good. So what I'm going to do now is um, I've got this, um, this plastic pipe which my four cables will just about fit down. So I think what I'm going to do is um, sort of do it as a, a sort of post like that, uh, try and get the cables down the back of the pipe. I'm not too concerned about how it looks from the back. Um, I had an idea to put a cover over that, but that's not going to be visible from where I can see the traffic light on my layout anyway. So I'm not too fussed about that. Um, so that's that. I'll just do that. Um, I was sort of looking at some some traffic lights around here, and, I, and they're about seven foot off the ground, the base of the the traffic light. Um, so on my scale of of double O gauge, that's um, four millimeters to the foot. So seven foot is going to be about twenty eight millimeters. So what's that? That's twenty eight millimeters is sort of about there ish. So plus the, obviously the length of the of the actual light itself as well. So I'm going to cut a section off that, feed the, feed the cables down, glue that to the back of here and see what that looks like. Right, um, okay, that's done now. Um, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, I think sometimes you can be over, overly critical of your own things and then realise that nobody else would ever notice. So, yep, there, I've just done that. I've put the post on. Um, I've, I've put my um, resistors on the end of, of the relevant wires. And let's just do a, a very quick check, make sure everything's still working. Amber, yep. Green, yep. And red. Good. Okay, so what we need, now need to do is put those on the layout and plug them into Arduino. Uh, well, there we go. Uh, first attempt, and that's all looking okay. They're a little bit larger than I would have liked, but um, there we go. That's, that's life. I'll, I'll probably put up with that. Uh, I've set the greens to about... 15 seconds I think um, so basically I've got, I've got this one here and this one here are now linked together and they're going through their little sequence so that's green there and that will then go to amber and red amber and red and this one will go from red red and amber to green okay good what I'll uh, what I'll probably do now is I'll have a go at uh, converting the simple delay statement into a more complicated um, millisecond function, and that will then give us more flexibility in how the signals can work. Okay, so we're back in our um, our simple uh, traffic light control uh, sketch, and if you can remember, what we've done is we've just set up some simple lights turning on and off and a delay between each one. We want to get rid of these delays um, and how do we do that? Well the, the best way to do it is to use the internal clock of the Arduino uh, and we can use it with a command called millis. And all millis does is it reads what the internal clock is in milliseconds since the Arduino was, pro was turned on or when we added the program to it. So if we're now Let's for argument's sake, we're now 17 seconds since we turned on the Arduino. The milli clock would be something like 17,458, and that would be changing every thousandth of a second. Um, so, how do we use that to time to, to, to create a timer? Well, it's quite easy, really. If we if we just did it in longhand, so to speak, we say we read the internal clock. Internal. Oops.
read the internal clock. We then say, OK, we want to add to the clock, add to this time, our time to light a lamp, which could be anything. Let's say that that's 10 seconds. So we've now created a time in the future when something needs to happen. And in this instance, we'll say we'll want this light to be on for 10 seconds. So what we do then is we just say, have we reached the new time? If the answer to that is no, then we will need to, to break out of this, this part of the program and jump into something else uh, with, the, with a proviso that we can keep coming back and checking. So it just, no, we haven't reached a new time. Let's just go and do something else. If we have re reached a new time, then all we say is, oh, great. OK, well, let, let's now crack on with the next part of the program. So that's quite straightforward, really. There is one slight complication in all this, in, and that is we need to avoid, the, uh, as, we, as we've said, this is a loop program. So it gets to the bottom of the instructions, comes to the comes to the top and starts again. But obviously what we've got to try and avoid is, is it reading the internal clock again? Because if it read the internal clock again, it would then add another 10 seconds onto that and, and have another time in the future. So in other words, it would never ever get to, to, to our time because it would, every single time this program came round in a loop, it would it would read the, t read the clock again. So we, ain't, we need to figure out a way to avoid that. Um, and the two ways that I know of is, is, is one we can use for fairly simple control and that is we just use an if an if statement. So we, we basically say if something happens, if it has happened, do this. If it hasn't happened, do something else. So if the internal clock has reached our new time of 10 seconds in the future, do what we want it to do. But if it still hasn't reached it, then go off and do something else and come back. Um, that That's for a fairly straightforward way of, of controlling. But ours is going to have to be more complicated than that because we've got multiple lights in multiple states. So the way we will do it is what we will we will create. Um, I think I think it's called a switch case command, but it's, it's otherwise known as a state. In other words, what state are the lights in? And the best way to illustrate that is to use uh, just a pen and paper and draw it out, which is what we're going to do now. So we create a number of states for our um, our signal, our traffic lights, and then all we need to do is just check which state is currently happening and how do we get from one state to another that sounds complicated but it's not that complicated when you can draw it out and that gives you a very good basis for then writing our new program so what we do now is we'll have a look at um, have a look at our little drawing we did earlier and we'll make some modifications to that with these states right so here we are back on our little drawing we did first of all uh, and what I've done is I've modified this to show how many states that these lights can be in which is, is a surprising number really so if we start from the from the, the first set if you like um light one is green and light two is red and i've called that state one in other words that's the first state that light these lights can be in um the second state is when light one is amber and light two is red and i've called that state two state three state four state five state six state seven and finally, state eight. State eight is when light one has the red and uh, amber on and light two has just its red light on. Um, now, you might notice that state three shows two red lights and state seven shows two red lights. So why are we using two different states for the same thing? It's just easier so that we can follow state three with state four and follow state seven with state eight. It's just going to make my life easier to do. So there we are. We've we've defined eight states that our light our lights can be in, which is which is quite a lot. But it, it will make things easy when we come to write the program on the Arduino. But the other thing we need to make to make a note of, in fact, we're making another eight states, and that is how do you get from one state to another? In other words, what's the what's the transition between state one and state two? Well, in all our cases here, the actual transition is no more than a timer. It ti it goes from green to amber, and the and the transition happens because the timer tells it to. But we need to um, we need to create those transitions uh, for the reason I said earlier is that we don't want to avoid the the, the count clock counter being reset every time it it comes back to check. So the way we can avoid that, and I mentioned about an if statement, but we're going to use this, these various states to do that. Uh, and a simple way to do that is we call these transitions uh, a number between the two states. So state one and state two, and the transition between the two is is one two. 
uh, we've got state four and state five, and the transition between the two is four, five. And the final state eight, the transition between state eight and going back to state one is transition eight, one. So we're going to create a number of states on our uh, on our Arduino program, and we're going to create a number of transitions. Um, and that will help us think quite carefully about how to change from one to the other. And it, it, will, be make, it will make sure that we make less mistakes when we do it because we're breaking it down into quite a number of small little packages, as it were. So we'll do that now. Right, well, I've, I've jumped ahead. I've, I've actually written the program um, and I thought it'd be easier to go through it rather than, than writing it line by line because it took quite a long time to do. So let's have a look at this now, see, what, see how I've, I've approached it. What I've, what I've done is I've set up four traffic lights and um, I'll put those in two sets of two. So set number one is traffic lights one and two and set number two is traffic lights three and four. So so traffic lights one and two would be at one junction and traffic lights three and four would be at, at a different junction. Um, now what I've done, because we've done away with our delay statements, it, it means that our user set values, the times for our signals to operate, can be completely independent. So for argument sake, for traffic light set number one, we've got a green time of 15 seconds. Uh, that's for traffic lights one and two. But if we wanted to change the green time for set two, which is traffic lights three and four, we could do that completely independently. So they will work in completely different ways. So I could change the green time of set number two to 20 seconds. Argument say so they're completely independent. Um, I've put everything in, in milliseconds now um, just because it's easier to do and it, it, may, it means we make there's less chance of us making a mistake later if we forget to multiply by a thousand. So just keeping it in milliseconds just makes things a bit easier. Um, so that, that's that. Um, the definitions haven't changed much. Um, I have I have en I've included oh sorry I've forgotten to mention that there is, I have included one more thing like, like a Bruce, Brucey bonus here and that's just to prove that once we do away with the delay statements uh, we can get the Arduino to do more things and um, what I've done is I've set up a couple of pins to act as uh, Belisha beacons for my zebra crossing. So I've got another definition in here for the time interval for the Belisha beacon to flash. And I put that at 500 milliseconds or, or half a second. And you can change that to whatever you like. Um, so the definition of the pins is the same, except I've now added two pins for the Belisha beacons. So I've got uh, A0 and A1 are my Belisha beacon pins. Now, the reason why, what that A basically means is I'm using the analog pins now. And the reason being is I've run out of pins here. I've got up to 13, which is the highest number you can go on digital pins. And now I'm starting to use the analog pins, which can be used as digital pins as well. So that's fine. And now we get to the, the, the new part of this program, which is where we set up what are called variables. Um, and the, all the variables are, is it's a, it's a, um, it's a, it's a repository for a number which changes as the program operates. Um, up here, we, we set some times for, the, for the, the lights and they never changed. And that was absolutely fine. But, but now, we, now we want things to start changing as the program runs. Uh, we need to set these variables up. Um, and if you remember on the sketch, I said we want to set up two different states. We want to set up the, the states for the traffic lights. And I've, I've called that traffic light set number one. And I've set up the states for the transition, and I've called that transition number one, which we'll, we'll, we'll see in a second. I've, because we've got two sets of lights, I've got two sets of, of variables, so one and two. So there's number that's, that's for, that's for uh, set number one, and that's for set number two. Uh, but what you'll notice is I've set I've already set the state of traffic light set number one to one, and you'll see why in a sec. Um, I've also set up an, another a variable for the Belisha beacon LED and the, and the reason we need that is so that we can make it flash on and off by, by changing its state as it were. I've then got a load of these and these are all the uh, timers for our for our, our, our traffic lights lights um, and as you can see I've broken them down so that there are, I think there are six, 16 or 17 here so for argument's sake there are two sets of here one is to tell the Arduino when we want to start the green timer going for signal number one traffic light number one and the other one is to tell it when to end. And just just out of interest, the variable for this is called an unsigned long, which which gives you a bit of a hint that because we're using milli millisecond timers, the numbers that the millisecond timer can go up to can be quite massive, uh, and we could quite easily run out of space in our um, in our variable. Uh, so we've 
we create a special variable called an unsigned long, which we can hold a, a ginormous number, basically. Um, and even though that can hold a ginormous number, um, I think if you left your Arduino running for, uh, I think it's about 50 days, it would eventually, the, the unsigned long variable would eventually run out of numbers uh, and things start, slightly strange things would start to happen. So as long as we don't run our uh, program for more than 50 days, we should be fine. So. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. So unsigned longs, that's, that's, they're all variables. Uh, we don't need to, um, to, to dwell on those too much because we can see what they do in a minute. Uh, we then get to our setup part. Well, that hasn't changed at all. All our pin modes are still set to outputs and I've added in the two for the Belisha beacons as well. The lamp test starts as well. Um, just out of interest, if you're wondering why I've put delays in here when I've said how bad they are, um, the, the, the setup, the void setup, only runs once ever and it's when you turn the Arduino first on so it's almost like a sort of pre-flight check as it were so this will only ever wipe once so the delay statements here is, is, is of no consequence to us so it's going to do our lamp test go down there and then it ends the lamp test and then we're into the actual program part of it called the loop the loop part of the program and the very first thing it does is it it activates our Belisha beacons and this is uh, an indication of how we use the milli clock here because what we've said is if our clock, internal clock is, if the number is larger than when we need to do something, then do this. But obviously it won't be to start with, so because we haven't set anything yet. So what will happen is we set a time in the future. So our Belisha action time is, is the current clock plus whenever we want this interval to be, which will happen to be 500 milliseconds. Um, all that does is it if, if the light if the LED, LED is on it turns it off and if it's off it turns it on that that um, exclamation mark there does that uh, and then all it does then is it writes the the, be the beacons as to how we want them either either on or off depending on how that's set up and how long has been how long the intervals uh, gone for so that that little bit there does nothing more than turn the Belisha beacons on and off. And you could duplicate that and have more Belisha beacons on your layout if you wanted to by making Belisha beacons three and four. And you can carry on until you run out of pins on the Arduino, basically. So that, that's, that, that's all that does. Now, if we put the delay statement in this, in, this, um, in this program, that wouldn't work because while we're trying to make the beacons flash, the delay statement would be doing something, twiddling its thumb and nothing would happen. So that's so the first advantage of putting uh, this millisecond clock timer in is the Arduino can now do more than one thing at the same time. It can make our Belisha beacons flash and it can also check how our traffic lights are doing. So then we get on to the actual traffic light part as well. Um, and as I said earlier, this is called a switch switch case command. Um, and I suppose the easy way to think about it, if you think of the switch um, as, a, as a corridor and the cases as doors in, in that corridor, and if you remember rightly, I said that um, when we looked at the diagram for our traffic lights, there were eight different states that they could be in. So there are eight states and that, that means that there are eight cases. Case one is state one, case two, case three, case four, all the way up to case eight. And they're all they're all within this this switch command, which we've called traffic light set number one. So there. Are, so that cover that covers traffic lights one and two. So the, the first thing that will happen is the program will get down to here and it will say, oh, OK, we've got a switch command here uh, and the variable is traffic light set number one. Which case is which door, if you like, is open to us? Well, we've already opened one door because up here, if you remember rightly, we set traffic light set one to one. So program comes down, it gets to our first uh, switch statement. It says, is there any uh, cases which, which are open to us? Is the door open? Yes, case number one is open. So then it does whatever's inside case number one. In other words, if we've opened the door to case one and it does what's inside. And the first thing it does, it says, okay, what, what's case one? What is state one? State one is the green uh, light one is on and on traffic light number two, the red light is on. So it sets all the, all the LEDs to suit. So for traffic light number one, green is on, is high. And for traffic light number two, red is on its high. Fantastic. What happens then? It then says, ah, oh, okay, right. Well, we're going to start our timer now for our green light. So we start the timer, which is equal to the current clock time. 
and the end time will be some somewhere in the future it will be the, the current clock time plus whatever we've called green time number one which up 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 on the top we called it 15,000 milliseconds or 15 seconds so it's it knows what time it is now it knows when it needs to end what happens next well it, well, the problem we could have here, if we kept that like that, it would just keep coming to here and resetting this timer and, and the 15 seconds would be forever in the future. So what we do is we say, right, OK, we're up and running now. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to get from state one, case number one, to state two, case number two. And how do we do that? Well, we need to tra we need to activate the transition between the two. So if you remember on our drawing, we had a transition between states one and two, which we called one, two. So what we do is we say, OK, right, we're now going to open the door one, two in transition one, which we'll see in a second. Uh, and the way we stop the, the timer coming back in here to reset this timer is we set our, our state traffic light set number one, which is which, which is what we're in now. We set that to zero. In other words, the door is now closed on case one. It can't get back in here. So it comes down to here and it breaks. And that means it jumps out of this, this segment of the program. And it's only it can only go one place now. It can only go here because we've shut the door on traffic light set number one. And the only place it can now go is transition one, case number one, two. So let's go down there. There's case two, it's case three, case four, case five, case six, case seven. You can't get in any of these. All these doors are shut. And then we get to our next switch command, which is the transition commands. Uh, and we've opened the door for case one, two. So now it can get in here and it goes, oh, right, I'm OK. We've got it can do something and it gets in here. And, and all it does in here is it keeps checking the time and it sees if it's got to the end of the green timer. And if it hasn't got to the end of the green timer, it breaks. It can still get into case number one, two. So it keeps coming back again and again, checking the time. And eventually it will say, right, I've, I've got to the point where I need to turn the green light off. So it doesn't need to come back in here anymore. So we turn transition number one to off to zero. It can't get back anymore. So it shut that door. But now it's opened another door. It's opened the door to uh, traffic light set one number two so it's that's the only door that's now open to it it's shut that door and it's opened that door it breaks so then it can only go into traffic light set one door two so we come back up to traffic light set again uh here it is traffic light set one and the only door open to it now is case two so it can't get in there it comes down to case two and what does it do it uh it turns off the green light on traffic light number one it turns on the amber light uh, red light is still the same, so that hasn't changed. So in other words, that transition has, has flipped our, uh, our traffic lights from case from state one to state two. And now it's in state two. What does it do? It starts the amber timer. And again, the same thing happens. It starts the amber timer. It, it sets the end time uh, and it won't do anything until the point where that amber timer has run out. In order to stop us resetting this, it then sets the traffic light set back to zero again so now it shuts the door on case two and it's opened the door on case two three and it will carry on doing that going through every case in turn and every transition in turn until it finally gets to the last transition and it says ah okay right we'll, we'll carry on doing um our, our transition here we'll, we'll uh we'll shut the transition door so case 81 door is shut and we open transition uh, the traffic light set number one. In other words, the very first one that we did, which is exactly where we started with our Arduino. So it goes all the way through these. It goes through the transitions and it goes through the cases. It's quite a clever way of doing it, and it's um, it's how I learned how to do that from from Rudy's model railway videos, and they're very very good. And it helped me out there because I wouldn't have figured it out for my for for my railway signals otherwise. So that's it really. It looks quite a, a lot of complicated set of instructions as it were but because we've broken it down it means it's, it's much easier to sort of jump in and out of each each state and each transition and each transition in each state is only a relatively small amount of information so that's it we are good to go um, now what I've done is I've, I've set the transitions up for and the states up for for set number one and all I did then if we carry on down the bottom here here we go traffic light set number two I've just duplicated the above again but this time I've replaced traffic lights one and two with traffic lights three and four so 
It's doing exactly the same thing as above, but they are now running completely independent of each other. So traffic light three can be on and traffic light one can be on a completely different color and different orientation. Um, and that's it really, um, that covers everything. So what we're gonna do now is we'll just, just run this as a double check, make sure this all works. And in theory, what should work is we, we can now have two traffic, we can, in fact, we can have four traffic lights, but I'm only gonna do two. We can have two traffic lights going through their sequence Meanwhile, we can have two Belisha beacons that are flashing on and off, completely independent of what the traffic lights are doing. And it's okay. So now. there we go. I've plugged in uh, the pins into the lights, and I've started that program we were just looking at running. Um, just if you're just wondering, these are my sort of little little test for aspect signals, which is uh, why they look a bit odd. Um, so what we've got is we've got the top two amber lights are, are, are Belisha beacons, um, and they're flashing on and off. Uh, every half a second and they're completely independent of the traffic lights below so traffic lights below we've currently got traffic light number two at green for 15 seconds that will go to amber and then it will go to red both traffic lights are on red for four seconds and then traffic light one will go red and amber and then to green and then it will stay on green for 15 seconds and carry on through the sequence uh, if we had, if we, if I had another two signals, I could plug those into additional pins and have another two set of signals running completely independent of all this lot. So that's it, really. That, that works. I'm happy with that. Um, so what we can do now is I can plug in my uh, my traffic lights, and I can also set up a couple of Belisha beacons on my uh, Zebra Crossing, uh, and they will run completely independent of each other. Um, and if you've got the um, if you've got the wherewithal to do it, um, you could actually now take the program I've just written and incorporate that into my signaling program. As long as you had to make, you just have to make sure that you haven't duplicated any variables. Uh, and you could have one Arduino program that was running signals, traffic lights, and Belisha beacons, all from one Arduino. And the only limited thing would be the number of pins you can use because you would. Uh, you would quite quickly run out of pins with with four aspect signals. Well, there we go. That's all done now. So I think I hope I think that's about it really. So I hope that's been of use. So uh, I'm, I can now have some uh, some traffic lights working on my layout, which is just just going to look quite smart, I think. Um, and and a couple of beacons on my zebra crossing. I hope that's been helpful. Um, have fun with it. Bye.